All right, we've got our uh, six and a half slab in here. I'm gonna cut a couple of discs out. We're just gonna shoot for a rough cut of three quarters of an inch. We've already got it set there. We're gonna face some of that off. It'll probably end up somewhere around half inch, maybe up five eighths uh, thick. But I think that our vise right here is gonna be just perfect enough to uh, try to cut this slab right here. So I've got the vise pushed over against the slab, but I wanna go ahead and give it a little bit of support on this side here. I'm just gonna use a, a half inch stud with the flange nuts on both sides. And this right here, we can, we can work in here like this and hold it square on one side. And we're just finger snug that just right there. And that, that'll give this side of the uh, vise a little bit of support. Try to keep it from uh, kicking to one side. So I'm gonna watch this as I tighten it up. <clears throat> that looks good, that should be good. I love this vise jaw back here. It, it supports the workpiece from trying to kick around and, and uh, out of the, the vise there. Let's see, my scale is sticking to my Magnet on the uh, mic right here. <laughs> All right, three quarter. Let's go ahead and give this a go. A little extra coolant there. All right, our first slab turned out good. So we got that one cut there. <clears throat> this one's gonna be even more dicey because I've just barely got it holding on to this uh, part of the jaw. But I feel confident that it's gonna hold it just fine. We've got the, uh, we've got the vice handle tightened up pretty, pretty tight. Same trick, we got our stud over here to uh, equalize the pressure on the jaw, on the vice I mean. So let's go ahead and give this one a try. Uh, they're not gonna, this isn't gonna be cut to the length that I want it to be, but because there's so little there catching it, my hopes is that it, it'll still leave me, this piece right here is something that I can, you know, save and put on the shelf so that we have another disc to use for another project later on. Let's hope it doesn't snatch it out of there. Well, that cut worked great, guys. That's probably the, the diciest cut that I've made on this saw so far, and I'm real happy with it. Vice just seems to work really good. Our uh, MK Moore saw blades, as always, are doing a fantastic job. So now we've got our three discs out of the six inch 4140. Okay, so we got our disc 
cut out of our slab of uh, 4140. These are the two pieces that we're going to use. And we got one more, of course, I say, put that back on the shelf. So I had been trying to uh, decide on how I wanted to go about building this next component, which is going to be this piece right here in the shaft and uh, kind of going back and forth on a couple ideas. And I think I landed on what I want to do. So here's the game plan. One of these discs, actually, you're going to have two discs that's going to be used. All right. One of these discs is going to be machined with a hole pattern in it. We're going to use these four half 13 grade eight bolts. You'll have four on there like so. And this is going to have more than adequate yield strength with four grade eight bolts there to hold this assembly together. All right. So this plate right here will be welded to the bottom of the uh, the column right here. I'm going to cut this plate off and we're just going to weld it to this end right there. And I'm going to cut four gussets that will probably just match the uh, corner of the tubing. So we'll have four gussets to help support it and then four the four bolts. That is going to bolt to this mating plate right here. So we're going to machine this plate. It'll match this. I might even put a registered fit on there, male, female registered fit, where they just kind of sit together. And then we're going to turn a shaft out of this piece of uh, 1045. We're going to bore the center of this. I'm going to have it where I'll press it together and it'll be welded on both sides. So we'll have a weld bead on this side and then I'll have a V on this side to where we can uh, weld that up and we can face it off and make it nice and clean. All right. And then that, once this assembly is made, the shaft and the plate, it's going gonna, it's gonna to slip through this bushing that will be machined and fit in this tube right here. This is the tube here that will be welded to the end of the beam that's going to be you know, on the back of the truck there. So it, it'll make more sense as we continue on. But I want to go ahead and get started on this portion of the project because this is going to be quite a bit of machining right here. And of course you know, getting this cut off, getting it welded onto that. So that's, that's the next phase right here. Let's get these machined, hopefully the shaft and get it welded on there. And then we will uh, move on from there to uh, this piece in the bushing. All the rusty crust down inside there. Nice. All right, we've got the, uh, the end plate cut off and I've got it dressed real well. Now the inside of that tube still has a lot of rust in there. So what I decided to do, I'm gonna go ahead and go set this in my evaporust tank. That way it can do its magic on the inside of this tube and, and start eating away at all that rust and get rid of that. But it'll also get the rust off of the uh, exterior of the tube there as well. We're still gonna clean this up and paint it, but using the evapor rust makes things so much nicer to be able to just de-rust the whole thing. So we're gonna go soak this while we start doing the machining on the two round plates. I've got my small three jaw chuck mounted on the Victor here. We're gonna use this for the, uh, for the disc. 
And one of the reasons why I like using this one for certain jobs depends on how thick it is that you're wanting to uh, face these. And this can really uh, make things a little bit easier and faster. The protrusion on this part of the jaw here where we're going to be chucking it is 10 millimeter, so a little over three eighths of an inch. And this side of the cut, this was the old cut. This one's kind of wobbly and, and unsquare. My side was a little more square. We're just going to use my side of the cut. But I'm going to take these fireball tool magnetic shim blocks. These are the quarter inch. And I'm going to stick them on the jaw there. Just like that. I've already wiped these off. We'll do it again. Make sure there's no dust under there. And that's going to give us just enough hold to catch this disc here. Just hold it in there with your hand. Come in there and snug it up. All right. And you can just take your uh, scale here and just push the shim blocks out. Don't spin it up with these in there. They'll come flying out at you. All right, so there we go. We'll just give it a double check, make sure that I got it tight. And let me give it a spin, see how it looks. It looks great on this back side here. I'll give you a shot of that to show you. But what that's allowed me to do now is we've got enough chuck there safely to hold this for what we're going to be doing, but I would like to turn the OD of this down. It's a little over six and a half, and they give you enough to clean it up, so I'd like to just take it down to, say, six and a half and clean up this outside and, of course, do our facing there as well. So that allows us to do that, and let me pull you over here so you can see how it looks there chucked up. So these... Just another little useful, uh, another use for these magnetic shim blocks is being able to do this with your, with your three, three jaw or whatever, four jaw, six jaw chucks. It works on all of them. So there we go. That'll allow us to get this OD turned, do our face, turn the OD down to size, and then we can flip it around, push it all the way up against the jaws, and be able to finish it out the way we want to. Uh, one little spot left in there to clean up. I'll go ahead and uh, knock that one out off camera, then we'll start on the OD. I want to turn that OD right up about as close as I can get to those chuck jaws. So this is what I normally do. Just go ahead and line up your tool and just very, very gently come up and touch the jaw, just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set an indicator here, anywhere. I'm going to give myself 25 thousandths gap. So I'm going to move it back 25 thousandths. Let's go ahead and set a zero. That's where I know I'll come in to stop. And then while the tool is right here, I want to go ahead and verify it's going to clear. I'll take my hand and just spin the chuck by hand. All right, you see? It'll clear. So we turn right up to that zero point and still have 25 thousandths. You just have to Make sure you stay on top of it and pay attention. Come in here and touch off and let's just clean this OD up. We'll see if we can clean it up to uh, six and a half.
Watch the indicator, stop it right on zero. And there you go. So, and then we can turn this around and it should have enough there to clean it up. And if we don't, so it may not be, may, may not have quite enough there. So we may have to do the same thing is um, put it on the magnetic shim blocks to space it, do our facing, or I'm sorry, do our turning and then push it back and finish out our facing or, or just leave it there, whatever, whatever to get it done. All right, let me get a micrometer and we will go ahead and measure that and see where it's at. All right, I've got 37,000, so hopefully it'll, it'll clean up to uh, six and a half. Doesn't look like it's going to. I wanna get that OD completely cleaned up so that we just have a nice looking part. I don't have to worry about any places like this where we would be chucking on it and not running nice and true. So, so there's another spot there. So we're definitely going to go ahead and finish turning it down, take it down next size. So we dialed in another 25 thousandths and that looks like it's cleaning up. So that should put us at 6.475 inches. I think that's gonna work right there. That looks good. Maybe the other one will clean up like that as well to match it. Now one of the problems I'll have with this, and it's not a big deal because of what we're making, this chuck doesn't run very true anymore. So even though we're chucked up on a freshly machined journal there, the chuck jaws are still gonna be running out because it's, it's an old chuck, it's well used, and it's not in good shape anymore. I'm just gonna turn this side down to match it and the little line that it'll that you'll see in there I'm not going to concern myself over that Take one more cut. Just gonna give it a give it another measure. And we'll just uh, take it down to match that other side. 2567. So 27 thousandths. Ten, twenty, five, six, and seven. Ten, twenty, five, six, and seven. 
As soon as it gets to that shoulder, I'm going to stop it. Just like that. So see the line I'm talking about? Uh, the chuck just doesn't run true enough to, to line up. So you've probably got three to five thousandths run out right there. So not a big deal because of what the part is and what we're building. We're just trying to get this trued up nice. I want to get this uh, other side face now. I'm going to finish it out at a half inch thick. Now I'm just stopping it there because I want to see about where it's at. Just We're just going to use calipers for this here. So yeah, we still got about 35 thousandths or so. So we'll go ahead and make this cut and then finish it out. Looks like we've got 30, about 30 and a half, 31 thousandths. We'll just, uh, we'll take a 30 thousandth face cut. 10, 20, and 30. All right, so we've got the face and an OD finished on this guy. What I wanna do is go ahead and take our other one here. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to that. And once I get through with the OD and the face, I'm going to put them back in the three jaw here. And then we're going to work on our male female fit registers. We're also going to have a bore through both of them there. The one like this guy is going to get welded to the tube. I'm going to go ahead and put a through hole through the center of that so that we have, um, you know, you save a little bit of weight in the center there. And it'll also allow for a little bit of drainage, uh, water drainage through there if it gets rained on. All right, so we'll come back. I'm going to do the same thing to this. So I'm not going to bore you with the same machine work that we just did, but I'll bring you back once we have both of these faced and turned. We finished the facing on uh, the facing and turning on the second disc there. So we're going to go ahead and start putting a hole in here. We're going to bore this to three and a half inches. We're going to try to make it like a, uh, a very slight interference fit over the shaft that I got down there. I'm going to turn and uh, we'll press it in and then have a weld be on both sides. But we'll go ahead and get it drilled and bored. And then we got a counter bore. Um, I'm sorry, this one's gonna be turned. We're gonna have a register turn on that. And the other disc, we'll do a, um, a, a female register on the other side there. This is going to be the inch and a quarter drill. I like to start with a half inch pilot hole. It relieves the center of it and it's a lot easier to push these taper shank larger drills through there. Let's see if this two inch drill will cut. The edge doesn't look perfect, but it might still, uh, still might drill a hole. So let's find out. I think it's going to get the job done. An eighth inch of pass through there. That's usually my standard for uh, jobs like this. 
Won't take but a few minutes and we'll get it out there close to size. making the uh, finish cuts on this bore here. We're gonna go to three and seven sixteenths on it. That way the shaft, I'll, I'll be able to turn it down a sixteenth. That'll leave a little tiny shoulder on it. When we go to press it in there, it'll just press nice flat against that face there. Just using a telescope gauge. And this isn't real critical because I'm just gonna match the shaft to whatever this bore is. And it's still warm from all that bore, and so it'll shrink a little bit, but we're just getting it to a nominal size there. Right there on it now. Just got one more light cut. And then uh, once this is cool, of course, we'll just remeasure this and then we'll turn our shaft to uh, fit it. We'll give it like a inter uh, thousandths interference fit. We've got a high speed tool in there. That's just a tampering tool, but I wanna cut a uh, weld bevel there. Uh, this is gonna have a weld prep, so is the shaft, and then so we'll have a V that we'll fill up, and then we'll chuck it in the lathe and face this side off to uh, finish it out. I'm gonna use a little cutting oil for this too to help it out. All right, judging by sight, that looks like that'd be plenty of weld bevel there. I think we're gonna have plenty. That's right at a quarter inch, about 3 16 deep there. I think we'll just leave it at that. So our register fit's gonna come up very close to that bevel right there. And once we get the shaft pressed in there, we get it welded up, we're gonna chuck this thing back in the lathe and we're gonna face all that off so that the actual area, the surface here where the register is will be nice and smooth. But uh, four inches is our diameter that we're gonna be facing it down to, an eighth of an inch back. So what I'm doing is just, I'm making a mark right there because that's gonna be my stop point going in. And I'll just verify it real quickly with this uh, scale right here. So yeah, so I'm a little over four inches. That gives me enough room there to turn that once I get it faced back to where I want. We'll go ahead and get rid of that chip there. That was a 16. Let's go ahead and go another 62 and a half. That's a 1.8 total. All right, then we'll just use our calipers here to measure it. So about 85 is uh, what we got to come off there. All 
that one did not want to curl away. Thirty-eight. Let's do half of it and then we'll finish it out. We're just going to use caliper measurements for that. All right, there it is. There's our register. And I think once it all starts going together, it'll it'll look it'll make more sense once we fill that in with the shaft, weld it, set it back in here and face it. So all we got left to do is uh, chamfer these two corners right here and then that piece is going to come out of the lathe. So I think on this other plate, we're just gonna go with this inch and a quarter hole, but I will, I'll bore it and chamfer it just to clean it up. All right, we got the hole finished there. I'm using the boring bar, and we're gonna face this counter board out of there, the register. And I'm going the wrong way with my feed. I've got a line. I went ahead and uh, counted this off with the uh, cross slides. I got a little line there, and this will give me a little bit left over to bore. Taking 50 thousandths depth of cut. That'll leave us with a little bit there to finish it out. Let's see where I stopped it at. Yeah, so we got about 120 thousandths to uh, bring it out. No problem. Wrong depth of feed. I'm sorry, wrong depth on the cut there and the wrong feed rate. That's why we're getting a stringy chip there, but it's just a little cut, so I'm not really too concerned about it. Still got 60 thousandths. I always do about half whenever I gotta finish something out. And this doesn't have to be a super precision fit, so. About another 30, 30 thousandths. All right, let me grab the other piece and we'll see if it fits. Should have a few thousandths clearance in there. There we go. All right, that'll work. I'm gonna let this cool I'm gonna check it and make sure we have adequate clearance because we don't want this drawing up and getting tight, but we can also modify it if we need to once we uh, weld this on and skin that just a little bit. But um, we need to do some chamfers there and this part, this side will be done in the lathe. All right, there's that side. Tell you what we'll do. We'll just go ahead and flip it around. Use that same tool. 
to chamfer the back of the hole there. Put it in gear. So the lathe portion of our two flanges are now completed. Uh, the only thing we got left here is to go ahead and go to the milling machine and put our four, four hole pattern. So this one will be drilled and tapped. This one's gonna be uh, drilled there. So we'll go set it up. I think I'll, instead of getting a spacer or clamping the table, I think I'm just gonna set the uh, fixture plate right there in the vise and we'll just clamp them right down in, in the vise and do our four, four hole pattern there. All right, we are set up in the mill here. We still got to get it indicated, but we are using our fireball tool fixture plate that I machined. I'm also using the fireball tool magnetic shims here as well. And I think these were the half inch thick shims. These are these work great for jobs like this. You can use them as parallels. These are going to be ground well within a thousandths of being uh, parallel and true in the same size as the, as the match set right there. So for doing general shop jobs like this, these these little magnetic blocks work great. All right, so we got all we got all four of them in there, just holding it down in the center, and we are going to use our Blake coax indicator here. All I did was just eyeball the center with a pointer, so we still have to indicate it into the center here, and we'll put our arm there so that we can hold it, and then we're going to be using the long this uh, this long arm right here feeler. And then we'll put a stud right here just to hold the, the torque arm right there. I've got it in neutral. There we go. So it's not too, too bad right there. As I've said before, I just like to do this by hand. Some people like to uh, turn the machine on and do this and that works fine and it's designed to do that at slow speeds. I just feel that I like to get do it by hand. I have a little bit better control. I can see it's kind of like reading a four jaw or doing the four jaw chuck with an indicator. I'm going 180 out and I'm seeing what the difference is. And I, I can tell that's you know three or four thousandths there. So I just I just move the handle a little bit, rotate it to the other side and make another movement and just keep doing that until we get to where that needle is not moving anymore. So that right there is within half a thousandths of being in the center. That is good to go. I'll reach up here and zero out our digital readout and now we're ready to uh, set our hole pattern. Since this is a pretty simple bolt pattern, we're just gonna drill four holes on a five inch circle, bolt circle diameter. We're just going to use the, the XY axis on the uh, DRO, DRO, just go to two and a half uh, each direction there and drill our hole. No real reason to set up the uh, pit circle and use, so that's the route we're going to take here. And we'll spot it, and then we've got a 3364 drill bit that we'll drill it with there. That'll be a clearance hole for a half inch bolt. And then, of course, we got our uh, chamfering tool that we'll use there as well. Just using a half inch spotting drill. That's designed to do exactly what you see right there. Put a nice uh, spot there. These are a little bit longer. You can actually cut these off if you need to and make them a short stubby. But these work great for spotting in your, your drilled holes. And we'll just go ahead and run this straight through there without doing another pilot hole. I am running 325 RPM. There's a big jump on these uh, step pulley mills. I go from 325 to 660. And I wish there was a speed in between. But so you sometimes you're running a little slow or you're running too fast. So providing a spot like that for your drills is actually going to benefit your cutting edge of your drill bit. And when you come down, your flutes are cutting evenly across the width of the, uh, the cutting edge there instead of just um, a corner.
And I am just using my dark cutting oil as well. I'm gonna come down and clean it up, just like that. I'll go ahead and move over to the other side here. So we'll go just back to center on X. Just like that. And then we're gonna come out to me on Y. Two and a half, just like that. There we go, two and a half. Now we're ready to drill the next hole. I wanted to mention something. Why, let's, let's talk about something while we're drilling this hole here. We've got a lot of newer subscribers over the past couple of years, even you know recently here. And you're gonna have a few people that, yeah, they don't really like the videos or they're too long. That's what you'll get is, uh, you know, why your video is so long. Now, a lot of my viewers, they, they love the long videos. That's generally what I have always made is long run videos, long format. I have since I started my channel. It's always worked well for my style. And my viewers have come to understand that that's the kind of videos that I make. And one of the reasons why I do like making the longer run videos, and you might notice that I tend to put some detail in these videos. I'm explaining what it is I'm doing. I'm, I'm showing the setups. I'm showing the accessories that I'm using. I'm showing the tools that I'm using. And I might be talking a little bit more about why it is I'm doing what I'm doing. Is That's the kind of content that I like to share with my viewers. So naturally, when you spend a little more time explaining what it is you're using, tools, fixtures, whatever, your videos extend out a little bit. That's not, I don't do that to make the videos longer for any reason. I just do it because that's the kind of video that I like making. And people, there's people that watch these videos that pick up on that. They, they, they see the little things that I do. I've got a lot of those comments over the years. They'll see little things that I do that I may not even be talking about. You may see me doing something with my hands or whatever, just doing a little technique that I might not even mention. And I've had a lot of feedback from people that say, I watch you while you work and I'm seeing what you're doing and I'm learning from that. I'm getting some of that out of there, out from you, you know, and applying it to my own work or my own practice in my garage, doing the same kind of, same kind of work. There's a lot of folks that didn't grow up in a machine shop and they don't have the the uh, same amount of experience that I might have. And so they're picking up on techniques that's helping them with their work because they're learning how to do this as well, right? So I like doing the longer run videos. I think it provides a lot of education there for people that are trying to learn, even the most basic of machining. You know, this kind of stuff here, drilling holes, this is some of the most basic machining you can do but there's usually some kind of little nugget that someone will take out of it whenever they're watching the videos and people like it and they appreciate it. But that's what I like doing. That's what I like making. And I just want people to understand that. So hopefully that made sense to you. Just thought I would give you a couple of my thoughts while we had a minute here to get these holes drilled. The other, the other thing that I wanted to touch on while we're still drilling, some folks might be looking at this project that we're doing right here. This is a great example of why are you, why are you putting so much into this kind of project, all right? And by doing projects like this, great example, this truck hitch crane and the amount of machining that I'm putting into it and effort and time, it, great, it, it, it creates good content like this to share. So as you're machining all of these components and building this thing, it's not just about the truck hitch crane. It's about the machining and sharing the, the machining techniques and knowledge onto other, other people. So there's a lot of different things that you can share in a, in a long run project that's gonna help some other people out along the way, you know, and then Sometimes you just have folks that it doesn't matter what it is. They just enjoy watching it anyway. 
So that's how I've always kind of looked at things. Not always. I mean, I'm not always making a project just to just to make videos for educational purposes. But since I'm in a project, that's how I kind of approach it is that there's a lot of stuff here that we can share that will help others in the shop. Not everybody. There's a lot of folks that know a whole lot more than I do. I wasn't being sarcastic there. I'm just being truthful. I just show you what it is I know and the things that I've practiced. And I just try to pass that along to whoever decides to watch my videos. So that, that also, that was not a rant or anything. I really genuinely just wanted to touch on that subject in a, in a video. So I just thought now would be a good time to do that since we're doing kind of a boring thing to watch for a long period of time in a video. We'll finish out this last hole and then we can move on to the, uh, the next disc here. By the way, I do have the door open, the windows open, so it's a little easier to use the uh, smoky cutting oil when you got the doors open. It just goes right on out of the shop, and I've always, I've always liked the smell of it. It's just, it just smells like a machine shop. All right, we're going to clean that off, bring you back when we're ready to uh, drill the next piece, okay? I'm just gonna repeat the process here of what I've already shown. We'll get this centered up on here nicely and get her clamped. And I'll bring the uh, coaxial indicator over here. I'm gonna have to use a little bigger clamp on this one. We're gonna use this guy here. And it's important to make sure that the clamp, the ends of the clamp clears. So when you bring the feeler around here to indicate this, it doesn't hit right there, so. That's one of the things that I'm looking out for. I gotta change my stud and then I will uh, bring you back for some drilling. I'm not through yet, but one thing I wanted to point out what I was about to do, and I thought I would say this because this might help you out too, is anytime I'm going from one size hole to another size hole, I go ahead and I take the drill that I just used and I put it away because I have screwed up a few times in the past where I came over here, set the next part up and not thinking I grabbed the wrong drill and put the wrong size hole in the part. That'll totally ruin your day. So I don't need this drill anymore. So before I go any further, I'm gonna go put it back in the index. I'm gonna grab the proper tap size drill for this hole here. All right, so we're on the second part here. I'm not gonna uh, share all the drill into this. Another, I mean, you saw, I'm just doing the same thing. But what I was gonna say was that I'm gonna go ahead and drill the, drill the four holes. These are gonna be tap size, 27 64 for a half 13. And then once I get them all drilled, I'm gonna leave it clamped to this. I'm gonna pick this fixture plate up, transfer it to the other vise on the table. I'm gonna use the flex arm to uh, tap the four holes. Okay, we've got her all set up here at the uh, big table using the uh, flex arm. Got it in my big uh, Kurt vise there. I did have to move one of the jaws out to the back side because the base of my fixture plate won't quite fit in here with that all the way opened up. Kind of funny. These old big vices right there, they don't open up as much as the, uh, the newer generation of the, their, their mill vices. But anyway, this will work, this will work good. It'll be a quick and easy operation. I am using my uh, Half-13 OSG tool HyproTap. These always do an excellent job. And because I have people usually ask me, we are running, let's see, that's our forward direction. So we are running 151 RPM. Uh, for the forward direction. This is variable speed. You got a dial right here. So see, you can just adjust it anywhere you want. We'll just run about 150. Just a little bit easier to see that on, uh, on video, but if you're not taking a video, you can certainly pump that up and, and get it done a lot quicker than that.
and easy. Go ahead and get the chips and the oil sprayed off here. That feels perfect. Awesome. We are just about done. All I got left to do, I still need to chamfer the bottom side of these plates here. Even the other plate, I've still got to chamfer that. But we're going to do that off camera very quick and easy. And uh, we'll come back and we'll see the fit up. I've got both pieces chamfered nicely. So I'll show you the, uh, the fit up right here. Between the two, we've got our registered fit. And then our half 13 bolts. So once we, the idea behind this is that this, this is going to be welded. This piece will be welded to the uh, tube right here. We'll also have some gussets out here as well. So the idea, this is going to be welded on the tube all the time. And if I decide that I don't want the bottom plate and shaft connected to it all the time, I can simply unbolt it. But it may not, the weight difference really may not make a difference once it's all together. And we may just end up leaving this bottom plate and shaft just have it all bolted together all the time. All right. So we know that that's going to work there. That's going to fit together. So I believe this is, we've got a lot of video here. This is probably going to be the end for this particular video. And on the next one, we'll, we'll pick it up from here and go ahead and, and see about getting our plate welded on to the end of the tube. We'll get that done, and then we also need to start on our shaft. Move this stuff here. So we're going to start on our piece of stock here. We're going to turn this, and then of course, you know, it's going to be it's going to be machined to uh, to fit on this guy right there. And then there's going to be a shoulder underneath there. This diameter, which is uh, three and a half, we'll have this coming down off of the plate. I'm sorry. It'll come off of this plate a little bit because I, I plan on having a shoulder here on the shaft that once this slips down inside the tube, it's actually going to be uh, resting right on that nylon bushing right there. All right. But we'll get to that in uh, our next uh, couple of videos there. All right.